Hey guys, Gary here from RV Living Life. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is about how did we wire up our coach. Originally our coach was wired like most stock coaches are, where you have two panels and both are powered when you're plugged into something. And when you're not, only the small panel on the right is powered, which is basically for boondocking. You know, you run off your batteries and you have a few, you know, primary plugs working, your lights, you know. Small things in the kitchen for boondocking. But uh, I want to show you how I changed our coach around. So we have two inverters now. We have uh, 800 amps of lithium batteries, LiPo 4. And uh, how we can, you know, choose between parallel or split phase at will. So here we go. It's going to be a bit of a deep dive into diagrams. Could be a little confusing at times. If you're not into technical aspects of how these coaches are wired up, maybe this video isn't for you. But if you're interested in how these coaches are wired in the more modern way with lots of lithium batteries and lots of power, check it out. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's start out with a very basic diagram. I don't have the best drawing tools, but I did what I could here. So what I'm showing you is the power coming in from a generator and from shore power. And most large rigs are set up this way. So what you have if you're plugged into a 50 amp power pole you would have, or power pedestal, however you want to call it, you would have a 120 volts, 50 amps on the red line, 120 volts, 50 amps on the black line, and then you would have the common and the green, which is ground. So if you were to put a meter across the red and the white, you would get 120 volts, and that would be a 50 amp line. And if you were to put a meter across the black and the white, you would get 120 volts, 50 amps as well. And these are two separate lines when you're on 50 amp. So what happens is you have a total of 240 amp, uh, volts and 100 amps divided between the two lines. And you have the same lines coming in from shore power, red, black, white, and green. So what happens is these wires run over to your transfer switch and the transfer switch, depending on, you know, which one has power, decides which one has power and just pushes the power through. So it allows it to flow through. So it goes over to the panel. And in most coaches, you have panel one and panel two, or you have what they call a split panel. Both, both panels combined in one. And what happens in panel one is most of your uh, receptacles in your coach are all hooked up to panel one, like your washer, dryer, if you have it. Uh, you know, your, uh, all of your important stuff like, um, oh, I don't know, your ACs, uh, all of your heavy draw items are in panel one. And then in panel two, you would have the stuff you would use if you were boondocking, like you'd wanna have your microwave and your lights and your power plugs in your kitchen, and that's pretty much about it. So what happens is the power comes into panel one, goes up to your inverter, through the inverter, and powers panel two. So if you're plugged into shore or your generator, the power just flows through panel one to all your breakers there, up to the inverter, flows right through, and goes to panel two to power that up. So if you are not plugged into shore or a generator, the inverter would see that you don't have any power coming in on the inline here. So it would just start inverting the power from your 12 volt batteries into 120 volt and it would power panel two. So power one would be dead in this case and power two would have your primary plugs running in your kitchen, uh, your lights, your microwave and uh, whatever else you would have just for your basic, basic amount of uh, power you would have. And this is basically how most coaches are set up. Okay, let's get into our second diagram. Here what I have is two inverters and basically what we're talking about here is a setup with two inverters. I'm not going to go into any great detail as to how I wire up one inverter, but you have the same setup here. We have a generator and shore power. All of your lines run into the transfer switch. And then the fact that you're on a parallel system that means that only the red line is going to be powered. The black line will be just powered from the red line. So for simplicity, I did not show the black line going to the inverters. I just want to show you that when you come from the transfer switch, the red line, which is line one, gets split between both inverters. And then you have your common and your green. So if you're plugged into 50 amps, sure here, you're going to have 120 volts, 50 amps split between both inverters. Or if you're plugged into a 30 amp line, you would have 120 volts, 30 amps split between both inverters. And then from your inverters, you run down. And again, 
the power goes into the inverter, inverters and comes back out again and it gets split between both panels. Both inverters are wired together, as you can see down here. So basically the red comes in, gets split between two inverters and gets joined again and goes to both of your panels. So in this case here, are all of your panels, all of your breakers in your panels would be powered. And in my mind, that's a much better way of doing it than the original wiring of the coach. But you would need a good battery pack for this. I moved it up here because I'm going to add some stuff in this area here after. But the battery pack up here I'm showing, it just shows that the red gets split between both inverters and the black from the battery pack gets split between both. And if you had no power coming in on the inlines of the two inverters, then the inverters would start inverting the power from the battery pack into the panels. So both panels would be powered up in this case, whether you're plugged into shore, the generator, or not plugged into anything at all. Both panels would be powered. So in total here, you're going to have 120 volts 50 amps if you're plugged into 50 amp, or you're going to have 120 volts 30 amp if you're plugged into 30 amp. And that's how this diagram works. And this is how most coaches that have dual inverters are wired up. Because of the simplicity of just plugging it in from one plug from a 30 amp, you can plug it right into a 50. Everything works. You don't even know there's any difference. All you know is you have more power. Okay, on to the next diagram. This diagram shows how to wire it up in split phase, how to wire your coach in split phase. So, in reading from the top here, the goal here is to have 30 amp parallel or 50 amp split phase. And to switch from 30 amp parallel to 50 amp split phase, you need to go into the Victron software and switch it before plugging in. This is the way I originally had our coach wired. I have made changes and I'm going to show you that in the next diagram. But again, you have your generator and your shore power coming in through the transfer switch. And you can see that the red line runs into inverter one, line one, and line two, the black line runs into the second inverter. And then when they come out the inverters, they split between both panels and they're tied together again before hitting the panels. So what happens in this case is you have to go into the Victron software and you have to set it at 30 amp parallel before plugging into a 30 amp post. And then that way you will have 120 volts, 30 amps split between both inverters and you can run it just like it was a parallel system. Then you can also go into the uh, Victron inverter software and you can switch it to 50 amp split phase. And in that case, then you could have your red line at 120 volts, 50 amps. And in addition, the black line at 120 volts, 50 amps. So you're getting more than double the power. You're getting uh, 240 volts, 100 amps of usable power split between the two inverters. So this is a huge advantage. And I did show in my in a previous video the difference between power you can use between 30 amp parallel, 50 amp parallel, or 50 amp split phase. And if, if you really want to see how much more power you would have, you should go and look at that video. I'll put a link in the description or up above or what have you. But anyway, with this setup here, what would happen is I would go to another park and I would assume I'm going to have a 50 amp plug. So I would be at 50 amp split phase because that's the park I just left. And I would get to the new park and I couldn't get a 50 amp plug. So I'd have to go 30. Well, I can't just plug into a 30 amp plug this way. I have to switch it in the software before plugging in. And to do that, I would have to do it through the internet. To be able to do it at my laptop or with my phone, I have to do it through the internet. Some parks you don't have internet, so that becomes a problem. And then you got to take out a USB cable and you got to reconfigure your inverters to be able to plug in. So this was kind of a problem. And, uh, you know, you always had to be able to have internet access to be able to switch it, or you had to go through the cumbersome method of, you know, changing the power on your inverters through a USB cable. Uh, it's not as, as simple as just reloading a profile like you can through the internet using the Victron Connect software. So after a year of going through this hassle of having to continuously change my power in hopes of what plug I would get, I decided to do things a little differently. So this is the way I've wired it now. What I did was I added a switch that looks like this one up here. Okay, so when I'm at a 50 amp park, I'm generally in 50 amp split phase power. 
while I'm there, I just can switch over. Like if I'm going to a thousand trails park, I don't know if I'm going to get a 30 amp site or a 50 amp site. You know, it's usually a gamble one way or the other. So what I do is I switch it over to parallel. And when I'm in parallel, I can run on either 30 amp or 50 amp, as I showed in a previous diagram. So to run in, th in parallel or split phase, there is a different wiring method for each. But when I go to a park, I just set it at parallel. When I get there, I can plug into 30 or 50. And if I get 50 amp, I can switch it back to split phase quite easily when I need it. If I'm not going to use a lot of power while I'm there, I don't even bother sometimes. But what I've done here is I incorporated this switch here, which is like this up here. And you can see the red comes into the switch and it goes to the top part of the switch and then the bottom switch and on both sides. And the black comes into the top part of the switch on the right side there. And then what, what it is, is this is the inputs from the power coming from the transfer switch. So you can see that red powers both of them on the left here, but only one on the right. That's line one. And then when you're coming out of the switch, red is on the bottom line one and black is on the top line two. So no matter which way the switch is thrown, whether it's thrown to position one or position two, red is gonna be coming out the middle line here and black will be coming out the top line. But down here on the inputs, if the switch is thrown to the left into position one, you can see that you'll have red on both top and bottom here. So that's how you do parallel because the red line is split between line, line one and line two. And then if you split, switch it over to position two, you can see that red and black are on different lines. So you're gonna get 120 volts, uh, 50 amps on one line and 120 volts, 50 amps on the other. So when it's in position two, you have split phase. And when it's in position one, you have parallel because basically the red comes up and goes to both of these and then goes out on the red line and out on the black line. So when it's on the left side in position one, the red comes up and goes through to this inverter. Red's going in there. And then when it's in position two, the red also goes up and it goes through the black line to this inverter, which gives you parallel wiring. And then when you have it flipped over into position two, you have red coming over and it goes out on, red goes out to the first inverter and then black goes out to the second inverter, but black is being powered by the second line here in this one. So by flicking that switch, you can switch it between parallel or split phase wiring. You can compare it with the previous drawings I showed you, but that's basically what this switch does. So when I go to a park and I don't know if I'm gonna get 30 amp or 50 amp, what I do is I set it, I go into my software while I'm hooked up to the internet and I switch it over to parallel. And then that way I can plug into a 50 amp or a 30 amp plug, it doesn't matter. And then when I get to the park, if I happen to luck out and get a 50 amp plug, I have power and I can switch it over to the 50 amp split phase as long as I can connect to the internet. So that's how it all works. You know, it's pretty good. Like you still have the generator and the shore power coming in the transfer switch. It goes through this switch and then goes over to each inverter and then gets split to the panels. And of course, there's the battery power coming in. So if no power is coming in the inverters, the batteries will uh, engage, will uh, power up both panels. So up here, the goal is to flip the switch into position zero and then plug into 30 or 50 amp shore power. This is the method I'd use. I put it in the center spot first where nothing is wired up. And then I flip the switch to position one for 30 or 50 amp parallel or position two for 50 amp split phase. And the reason I did it this way is for simplicity when I'm changing parks. It may seem a little complicated, but once you get used to it, it's very simple. And I really do like having 50 amp split phase power because you basically get double the power. If, again, if you look at the video I made where I showed how much power you get out of 50 amp split phase, it's remarkable. Like I can run everything you could think of in the coach and not even have any issues whatsoever and, and still charge my batteries at the same time. It really is a good situation. Okay, and that's basically how it's wired. It may seem a little complicated to some people or maybe most. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. I'll certainly help you out with that. And if you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. So thanks for watching and have a great day. Take care, everyone. Oh, and please like and subscribe and leave a comment and ring that bell. Thanks a lot. Bye now. Take care.